the battle to overhaul Obamacare. President Trump ramping up the pressure on Republican senators, tweeting this this morning. So important Republican senators under leadership of Senate Majority Leader McConnell get health care plan approved after seven years of Obamacare disaster. Must happen, according to the president. The bill now has two no votes, including Senator Rand Paul, who we heard from yesterday. He told me on this program yesterday, he's a no, and here's why. You know, I pledge to the voters to repeal Obamacare. I think it's a disaster. But the bill doesn't repeal it. It keeps about half of the Obamacare taxes. It keeps most of the Obamacare regulations. It keeps most of the Obamacare subsidies. And it creates a giant new insurance bailout super fund of about $200 billion. This isn't repeal by any means, shape, or form. Joining me now with reaction, Congressman French Hill in D.C. Good to see you, Congressman. Thanks so much for joining us. Good morning, Maria. How are you? What about that? How could you support a bill that, that keeps all of these subsidies, keeps the Obamacare taxes, uh, and, and creates a whole new entitlement program, as Senator Rand uh, Paul just said? Well, last night the Senate just released their draft, and I'm sure members of the House are going to be studying it today and see the reaction in the Senate. The main objective that we have in both houses is to lower uh, health costs for our families where premiums have skyrocketed, deductibles have skyrocketed, and choices have collapsed. So that's the goal. And we'll be looking at the Senate's bill in respect to those goals. Okay, so in other words, it's, it's not a goal of yours necessarily to remove the taxes in Obamacare. Well, I think in the House, uh, Senator Paul, uh, Rand Paul makes a good point, which is that uh, in the House bill, we repeal all the taxes and we dismantle the regulatory regime or the bulk of it with an eye that we want to shift powers back to the states, creativity and flexibility back to the states. So it's true that in this Senate draft released last night where they maintain some of those taxes, in my view, that will be controversial here in the House. Uh, Congressman, the Wall Street Journal editorial page describes this keeping these uh, tax increases in the Senate bill as the GOP essentially capitulating to progressive opposition. Moderate Republicans folded amid a false if completely predictable tax cuts for the rich narrative. So now the question remains, how does this play out when you actually go to sit down and do tax reform? Because again, this is a tax and spend liberalism that is, that is the Republicans are trying to present as, as helping the middle class. Exactly right. Well, by cutting uh, the taxes and reducing the regulations, we think it lowers uh, the price of health care, the access to health care, and we need the Senate's help in creating a more competitive health care marketplace. You make good points, and it's gonna, as I say, it'll be controversial here in the House in this most recent draft by the Senate. Congressman, let's move forward in time here. Uh, I'm concerned. I mean, look, look at the razor thin margin that's in the Senate right now with respect to the votes. Let's say it doesn't pass. Uh, what happens after that? You got a recess coming up. We got a lot of things that have been promised by the president, including regulatory reform, tax reform. What do you think happens if this thing doesn't pass the Senate? Well, I think uh, members in both houses want to reform the failings of the Affordable Care Act. The law is broken. People are being failed. Families are being hurt. So we need to sit, stay here and do our work and get this fixed so that we can go on and focus on things also that we think will help grow the economy, like tax reform, something I'm very interested in, continue our effort to right-size regulatory burdens on the economy, and keep uh, the signs of economic growth moving forward that we've seen recently. Well, well, how come your colleagues are you know, interested in, in talking about lower taxes when it comes to the tax bill, but you're okay leaving higher taxes in Obamacare? Well, I didn't say I was, and I didn't say that people in the House were, but there are apparently some in the Senate that are. Yeah. And so that's the challenge. That's, that's the challenge. So what are you going to do? I mean, is there a plan B if, this, if it doesn't come to a vote in the Senate? Well, the plan B is we've passed our bill in the House, and we're waiting for the Senate to come up with their best idea that they think can not only pass the Senate, but come back and pass the House that will get Tre President Trump's support. So we're at that. We're legislating is hard, and it's uh, time consuming, and it doesn't always fit with people's neat expectations, whether they're the leadership in both houses or the American people. But yeah, but with I all know due one respect, thing. I mean, the American people are saying, look, we've been hearing about a repeal and replace for seven years. So yeah, yeah. it's hard. It's hard but but how long can it take, sir? 
Well, we passed ours, as you know, a few months ago, so now we're waiting in the Senate. Yeah. And I'm, well, I'm as eager as everybody else to get course. our health care system right. Right, right. Go ahead. Co Congressman, I mean, it says here that the bill would preserve a 0.9% payroll tax and a 3.8% tax on investment income on individuals that are making above $200,000 and couples that are making $250,000. Isn't that really small business owners and, you know, basically, I mean, not middle class, but these are the people that you want to appeal to. These are the people that are that are providing health care to the people that need it. Uh, how, how do we have Grover Norquist on saying that he's going to cut these taxes and then just, you know, an hour ago, and you're saying that, you know, in this specifically, we're going to keep these taxes in here? Well, you're talking to me as if I'm in the United States Senate, and right. I'm not. I'm right. in the House. Yeah, no, I voted to repeal these taxes. Yeah. We, we invite you to bring on uh, Republican senators to react <laughs> and to, we, we uh, have to the been. We had, and, and that's what I'm saying. We had Rand Paul on yesterday, sir. Yes. And, and Senator Paul basically said, look, I'm a no. This is too many taxes. It's right. too many subsidies. You just heard what he said. Yes. So um, why not go down that route? Why not say, okay, you know what? I'm going to join with Senator Paul because I don't agree with this, and I'm just going to let Obamacare implode. Well, I think that that's one of the things that could happen here. If we don't... Uh, pass a repeal and replacement bill that uh, fits the uh, uh, parameters that I've laid out this morning, then we're confronted with keeping Obamacare as it is. And how is that? Yeah. It's failing the American people. And that is, to me, the bigger motivator that we want to have affordability and access for our families. And we have not seen that as a result of seven years of uh, Obamacare. But does that obstruct the whole agenda? I mean, this whole conversation of, oh, you had to do health care before you did tax reform because you wanted to save money on these, uh, on overturning uh, all the taxes, a trillion dollars over 10 years. I mean, if you don't get a bill out of the Senate to the president's desk, uh, that all of you can agree on, does that mess up tax reform happening later this year, sir? I don't think so in the sense that I think it may change what's contained in tax reform. It may change the direction of tax reform. It's not the one that those of us in the House would prefer. But we can use reconciliation for the FY18 budget cycle, considering if we can get a budget done in both houses, and we can use that as the vehicle to do tax reform.